All right. Well, welcome to the uh, first face-to-face -face meeting of 2023. We had a uh, pretty good board meeting last night, and uh, we we dusted off the old Phase One Pavilion. Um, for those of you that weren't at the board meeting last night, the reason we're here is uh, the board uh, board of directors, the board meetings aren't immune to getting bumped at the North Shore for uh, events. So we have a uh, we had a rehearsal dinner booked last night, and then there's a wedding reception uh, today at the North Shore. So we dusted the Phase One Pavilion off, and uh, a little nostalgia here, and uh, brought everybody back here. Um, Thanks to uh, Janelle for uh, getting us our cookies and coffee from uh, Lepinks. And uh, coffee is well well needed today since it's about 49 degrees out. Uh, so those golf cart rides were a little brisk over here. Um, <laughs> right? So uh, staying true to what we did last year, this is this is uh, you know your guys' time. Um, we uh, posted an agenda out there for the board meeting. Um, we've got the uh, staff, it's kind of like church, they're sitting in the back there. We've got uh, Paul from Public Safety, uh, he's our Public Safety Manager. We've got Larry Finer, um General Manager at the Golf Course. we got uh, Kent Livingston in Sales, Janelle in Camping, and uh, she is also, she wears many hats, uh, Executive Assistant for the Administration Team, as well as uh, uh, helping Kent out in Sales. And then uh, we have Ian uh, Mitchell from uh, Marketing and Communications. So, uh, and then we have board members here as well. Ellen uh, Carpenter, Rick Day, Scott Wyman. Uh, thanks for thanks for joining. And Larry's here too. Larry's here too in the uh, in the audience. Um, but this is your guys' time, so uh, we'll open it up for any uh, questions or comments that you might have. <coughs> Don't be shy. What's going on with the well in phase three? They put good. in a nice well, but I don't yep. see it going anywhere. Yep, good question. Uh, so Steve's question was, uh, what's the status of the well in phase three? Uh, we did give an update on all the lake projects uh, last night at the board. Um, once we get that posted online, you guys can uh, get a little more details on that. Um, to take a step back, the, the well, we, we went to a uh, survey Hey, where's where's the best spot to tap in for a well? Um, we narrowed down a location. Uh, we've tapped that well. Uh, we just got the report back at the uh, end of last week, actually the middle of last week, and um, the output is not meeting the requirements that we need. So uh, we were expecting to get about 500 gallons per minute out of that well. Uh, it's not even close, and so we've got to uh, figure out what our options are. We either A, need to try and do some uh, alternative things to try and produce more output coming out of the existing well, <clears throat> or we've got to go back to the drawing board and look for another spot. But uh, just to be fully transparent, it's like under 100 gallons per minute right now coming out of that well. It's significant, it's not even close to what we were expecting out of that. So we're, uh, we're back to the drawing board. That's strictly for the lake. That is, that is, oh, yes. yeah. is that one of the ones that we're putting down into what they call the Detroit water system? <clears throat> um, I don't know what water system there is. When, when they did the survey, they did multiple layovers of, hey, here's areas that you can tap, and based on the readings, here's where we think we can get the best output. I don't know the name of the final area that they selected, Steve, oh, but... Um, <coughs> It was uh, it was the number one option, and it's it's not even close. And we've struggled with a lot of our our lake development projects in the off season. Um, tune into YouTube on that; we'll get more information. <laughs> Carolyn, you had a question. Mm -hmm. Pertaining to that, um, when you say the certain date, who are you referring to? So we had uh, we had Reamers, uh, who does our well uh, wells. They did all the wells throughout the lake here. Uh, we handed that off to them and they tapped into their resources and they, they do an overlay, a geological overlay, um, and they come up with recommendations on where to, where to tap in for the water. So it, it's all, it was all through uh, Reamers. So the cost to Sandy Pines then, it's 
since this really failed. Yeah. So we are we're going through that process right now. So an additional cost then is it for new surveys and new possibly to uh, fill well, we wouldn't have to do another survey because this is this was one of many other options. Um, one thing that we're talking about is uh, tapping some of those other areas that they recommended, and uh, with like what they call mini test wells, and uh, getting getting readings out of that before we drill a big hole into the into the bottom of the lake again. And we're still going through the we're still going through the, the costs. When you say phase three, and now you said lake, are we in, in the lake of phase three? Or? I believe it is outside of the lake. Um, if I remember, it was outside of the lake, uh, kind of on the shoreline that they tapped all the way down, and then they were going to pump it into the lake. That was the spot that they were uh, that they were looking at. So basically, very disappointing. Uh, yeah, as we stated last night at the board meeting, which I think you're at, uh, it was it was a struggle for a lot of our lake development projects on the offices. And yes, this one was a disappointment. Okay, can I change the subject? So pertaining to the lake. Sure. What happened to the permits to the, um, for the for the uh, dam? <clears throat> Good question. So the question was. Uh, we had three projects. We had riprap project on the dam, we had the wells, and then we had dredging in phase three. Those were the three projects that we tried to work on in the off season. Uh, we submitted our we submitted our permits to Eagle. Um, we also hired a third party uh, environmental company to kind of bundle a package together for all of our permits: the uh, the dam, the dredging uh, together. We held a meeting with DNR, um, Eagle, DEQ was here, Allegheny County was here on the 27th of January at the dam, and we walked through that entire plan. Um, they recommended that we separate out the dredging as a separate project because they were very transparent with us that they rarely, rarely approve any dredging permits. <clears throat> so that one is going to take a longer process. So when we reviewed the dam, uh, we had uh, a dam inspector there, and uh, <laughs> well, literally, <clears throat> and then we had our normal eagle guy that we deal with permits around the lake. So if members want to do retaining walls, they got to get a letter from the park for sponsoring of that. And then either the contractor or the member will submit an eagle permit. Um, he's been he's been really helpful uh, for us um, in the past. So to answer your question, after we laid that plan out, everybody said, "Yep, this is this is easy peasy." We went through our inspection of the dam. We have a B rating on our dam. They graded like uh, back in the old days of A, B, C, D. Um, and we got a B rating. It's a 50, it's going on 52 years, I believe. Um, and it's in decent shape. So they were impressed and, and uh, very um, grateful that we were being proactive. The plan was to lay down landscaping, um, kind of like a landscaping fabric that goes into the dam, almost out to the spill well, and then put large limestone riprap in the lake and then bring it back up on the shore. And the purpose of that is to um, help uh, subdue the energy from waves that are just pounding on the dam. Um, they said, no problem, this is easy peasy. And um, it's been a struggle. The, the full transparency, the requirements continue to change every time we talk to them. And nothing has been approved and it still sits there waiting. Since since then, um, last time uh, since then, we've had we pull our contractors into the discussion. We've had plans laid out with the contractors. The contractors have now uh, filled up their season, and you know we're not going to do major construction on the dam. I mean that's that's an artery through the park, right? So putting giant like limestone down there, having construction trucks, we're not going to do that during the season. And the uh, the contractors are already booked for the season, so. 
we're going to take the rest of this summer to continue to get in front of Eagle to try and get these uh, approved, and then we'll uh, we'll try and kick this off in the fall. Yeah, the question. Back to the well. Yeah. How deep did you go? Great question. Um, I want to say they went. I don't have the report in front of me. I want to say they went 60, 60 feet. 60? I believe so, yeah. I don't think for a well that size, you need 500 feet. I, I, again, I don't have the report in front of me. I, I don't have the number off the top of my head. I can, I can get that information. I can send that out. Yeah. I, again, I don't, I don't have that in front of me. I can pull that out and uh, send that out to you if you want. Any other questions? Uh, I thought when you're back on the well, I thought when you were doing the wells, you were trying to uh, get permits for three 12 inch wells. That's, it. <clears throat> That's an eight, you said. We, we were doing, um, we were looking at three wells. We were going to put another one in, um, I want to say, Sailboat. We were going to put one in Sailboat Cove. We are going to do two in phase three. Um, due to budgeting and, hey, before we spend all this money on three wells, let's try one sure. and see where see where that goes. And originally, again, the, the output that we were expecting was going to be anywhere from two to 300 gallons per minute. And we were told if we tap into this area, we're going to get 500 gallons per minute. You might not need a second well in uh, in phase three. Well, now we're at where we're at. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, I thought they were 12. That's not 12. That seems like Well, again, yes. They, 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 again, the recommendation from the well company was where we were hitting. We didn't need it. We didn't need a 12 inch. We could. We, I think it was eight inches what they what they drilled into, and we can we can get the output that we greater than the output that we need with an with an eight inch. So that's back to okay. Well, yeah. We follow the recommendation. We're not getting what we want. So um, myself and, and Ben and the Lake Committee, uh, Jim Buchanan, um, has been helping us with uh, with trying to figure out what the next steps are. So. How many wells, working wells, do we get? Not considering three, because we don't consider that a working well. Right. Um, how many working wells do we get? I think we have four. I think we have four. Yeah. And they're producing enough to keep, because right now the lake is pretty much, nothing's going over the dam. You know, it, it, you're right, nothing's going over the dam. Um, it, it's right at, you know, the spill well, I want to say, for a while, it's been going over that spill well. Earlier, yeah. Um, but, you know, in Carolyn, it depends on it depends on who you talk to. Um, yes, the, the four wells do uh, enough for us, um, and they do have some output that will maintain the, the lake level. But what we continue to see is it's here, and then during the summer it goes down, and we get a rain, and then it comes back up, and then by the end of the end of the season it starts getting down again. Um, it's it's kind of a moving target. Just to be honest with you, um, do I have all four pumping right now? Or yes. Yep. Yeah, ben has all four of them on, and um, he we ran into scenario 2021-2022 where because we, he was running them so wide open consistently that we started to have part failure, and then they were down for a while because we were waiting for parts. We have we have parts. We have spare parts. Um, you know they've been they've been running for us, so we're in a good spot there. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. You know you're you're talking about the water going up and down over the spillway and stuff. What well, it only takes away from the boats to create to go over the spillway and drop the level down. You got 15 boats out there. I mean you're losing six inches easy. Just from that, is, have you ever thought of like a diversion in front or of the dam, like this, this knock the waves down, or, or at least have them go up and come back down into the lake instead yeah. of going into it? No, good, good question. Um, and you're right, Steve, on that. So 
the, the biggest, the biggest um, water level um, impact is the heat, the evaporation during the summer. As it heats up and it gets muggy, we, we, we use a ton of water just from evaporation. And then you throw the boats on top of that with the waves. Um, we have our first lake committee coming up on Tuesday, and there are a couple of recommendations to uh, not only putting riprap in front of there, but what else can we do in front of the dam? So, so you don't have to, to, one to wave going right in. Agreed. Yep, that would be, um, <clears throat> that would also help with some of the recommendations that I think are going to go to the lake committee with subduing those waves so they don't go over the spill well. The biggest, the biggest thing is we want to stop the impact on the, on the dam. Sure. And so the more you kind of put in front of that to take that energy and send it somewhere else, um, you don't have it going over the spill well and you don't have it beating the dam up. Good question. Joel. Well, switch subjects. Someone brought up last night the golf course and uh, the assessment mm -hmm. that's coming up next year that golf course is not self-sustainable at this point. Um, and come next year, if the funds can hold, then the golf course is going to go into a negative. Right? So how do we, over the course of the next year, come up with a plan to make <coughs> the golf course more self-sustainable? Well, we've been, uh, we've been working on that plan really for probably two, three years. And again, if you look at the financials, You've seen that from that net profit, it's continued to grow. Um, you know, Larry's done a good job um, adding additional additional things to the golf course. I mean, we have karaoke nights there. The karaoke then brings in non-golfers. They eat there. They buy beverages. Um, Larry's done a great job expanding public golf, bringing in uh, public leagues. Um, public memberships, uh, you know, we put a 19th hole grill uh, in there last year for lunches. Um, and so the, I think one of the things that we got to get out from the membership is it, it's a golf course, but there is so many other things that we've started to do down there that it's a golf course plus cornhole was held last night. Um, you know, again, karaoke, uh, poker runs. So we've added a bunch of activities to try and push it to the golf course to help. We've seen that on the bottom line. But again, the, what Joel's talking about is if you look at the financials of the golf course, uh, I think what last year made about $100,000. Uh, but if you go to the top line where it's in the revenue section, $270,000 are due to, from operations, it's, it's uh, due to the assessment, and then another $54,000 are due to capital. So that's $324,000. You pull that out, the golf course is not making $100,000, it's losing $200,000. So, um, you know, that's um, one of the things that Larry and Larry and myself, David uh, Ingalls, who's the New golf course uh, general manager taking over for Larry after this season. Um, you know, we're already starting to meet with what are some other options that we can start looking at. So we've been working on this for probably two or three years. We've seen an uptick, but to take that uptick from forty, fifty thousand dollars to three hundred twenty thousand dollars is is a big deal. Right, but I mean, the assessment's been going on for uh, almost ten years. <clears throat> yeah. Right. I can't. I can't speak. Uh, I don't. I don't necessarily disagree with you, Joel. I can't speak to. You know, I've been here four. So, um, and you know, year one, COVID. So how do we open the park? Year two has been. Um, you know, how do we, how do we take care of some of the the issues, infrastructure, assessments, things of that nature. So we've been working on it for you know a good two three years on. Let's get more activities down there. Let's show that we can try and get this to be sustainable um, without having an assessment. Uh, we're just being fully transparent that there's been a lot of good stuff there and a lot of good stuff done. Uh, that 300 and some 
thousand dollars is a big deal to try and overcome. So, yes, Carolyn. Well, speaking assessments, mm -hmm. the other assessment. How many years has that been going on? We've uh, we're in year six. Six. Year year six of ten. And how are we doing with that? One? Um, you know. Kimberly has done a great job with uh, you know managing that, and we we had an original list from what I understand from you know 2018 when this thing was uh, you know approved and we started doing these projects. Um, those those items on the list are doing well. Um, they've been kind of ticked off. A lot of them seem the, they're recurring. You know, to give you an example. Like every other year, we'll try and replace a uh, public safety vehicle. You know, the Jeeps are falling apart, they have high maintenance. So we got rid of one, and Paul's got a new explorer um, used, so used yes. explorer um, in, in the fleet. Um, so we've done a good job managing that. I would say the, the biggest thing that Kimberly and I have seen, and, and she'll correct me if I'm wrong, is because she looks at it and breathes it, um, is Two things. One, we had a 10-year plan that um, brings in $432,000 from the membership on an annual basis. Okay, um, that $432,000 does not get adjusted for inflation like the dues. If you were here last night, we communicated that the, the CPI index for the dues uh, came in at 4.9. So it's down from 8.6, which it was last year. It's at 4.9. So the impact to the members is going to be an additional $77. Um, that goes into our operations. The 10-year capital is a flat 200. So we've lost inflationary escalators over the course of six years. We're going to lose it over 10 years. And to give you an example, the phase one or I'm sorry, the phase two pool, which was in the plan at originally, I believe, $100,000, $200,000, it got bumped up to $500,000. The quote on that is $1.5 million to $2 million. That's construction inflationary costs that are, that are hitting us. So what we're seeing is 10-year projects, you know, we're, we're based on inflationary, um, you know, we may only get six or seven years of projects um, out of out of this bucket of money that we've got coming in from the membership. Um, some infrastructure quotes, uh, you know, we uh, and we're trying to offset some things. Steve Yarman continues to do a great job with grants. Um, we've got a grant approval for uh, another FEMA shelter. The South Shore didn't pass last year, so feedback from the membership was, you know, go back to the individual CCs to fix. So Steve DeArmond went out and got uh, a grant for, I believe, CC1. Um, it's a FEMA grant. Uh, without that FEMA grant to, to get us a, a replace a CC, and our CCs are, you know, 50 years, you know, 30, 40, 50 years old. To replace one CC, it's anywhere from a million to 1.7 million in construction terms today. We pull in 432,000. Our infrastructure is 50 years old or more. So those are kind of the things that we're, we're starting to think about. Um, you know, to Joel's point, golf course, uh, we're in year nine. Um, you know, we've been thinking about this for two to three years. Um, you know, we've got um, you know, Kimberly, myself, the board, we've been thinking about this, uh, you know, what's inflation doing to the infrastructure of the park, how do we replace it, and, uh, you know, we're trying to come up with plans, where can we offset as best we can, um, what's, what's it look like after this 10 years is up, uh, we're, we're putting those plans in place right now. And Jeff, I'd just like to add, this building is one of the items on that plan, the original 10-year plan, that really we don't have a plan for because we don't know what to do with this building. <laughs> um, we have a budget for the roof, but at the same time, what do we do to the 
we still continue that when there's other infrastructural challenges to this building that have become aware during that time. So that's still hanging out there, but at the same time we're fighting those inflationary needs, so if we don't do that, then that continues to creep up as well. And we've tried different things, but we just haven't, I mean, the um, proposal last year, you know, that it go through, it was an idea, but it wasn't the best idea, I guess, with part, so we go back to the drawing board, so. You know, and to, to, to Kimberly's comment, in the, in the 10 year plan for this building, there's $300,000 to fix this roof. If you look at the roof, I mean, you can look over here, we've got some water damage and things of that nature that Ben's team continues to, to fix. But do we put $300,000 into a roof when we had an engineering survey say this foundation is moving into the lake? So, I mean, you can see some of the, the, the concrete cuts and some cracks in here where it's starting to be un, uneven this foundation is moving into the lake. So we got the roof quoted, we have $300,000 in the 10 year budget. The roof came in at over $400,000 um, in today's cost. And then when we tear that down, that didn't include HVAC and electrical to get it up to code because it's a you know, 40, 50 year old roof and HVAC and electric is outdated up there. We got quotes on that, that was another 200 plus thousand on top of that. So if you put $600,000 into a building that Kimberly's point we don't know what to do with because this foundation is moving, um, do we tear it down? Do we use that $600,000 on a brand new building? That's how the South Shore came about that was voted down. Um, you know, the board's looking at creative ways uh, to try and uh, you know, offset some of the cost, pull some more money in uh, to to the capital. Um, you know, we you know we've got some we've got some things we got to work on, and we're going to have to have some um, some pretty hard decisions coming forward here in the next uh, couple of years. Yes, Roger. So you said the pool of minimum cost is going to be get the two million dollars from. Um, that was voted on. So that was voted on and approved by the, the members because again we had five hundred thousand dollars in the in the budget, okay, and because we only had five hundred thousand dollars, we have the one point five already sitting in operations cash. It's above the board's threshold and operations threshold threshold to just move it into capital. That's why it went to a vote, and the members voted to go ahead and move that money. So it's not costing us anything because the movies, uh, the money is sitting there right now, and we just have to move it with, with member approval, <coughs> and the members will have to move it. Jeff, can I, I like to add, kind of going back to Joel's comment mm -hmm. with the golf course. So kind of what was our plan for the golf course as far as okay, we are still making money, right? We're still making about hundred thousand, eighty thousand, seventy-five thousand originally. We have to remember that there still is enough payable to Sandy Pines. So in addition to mm -hmm. Sandy Pines being sustained by that assessment, the operational assessment, and part of it is the capital. So we're looking at two seventy thousand in operations, fifty four thousand in capital. We end with about eighty thousand to one hundred thousand, seventy five thousand is being paid back per year. Mm -hmm. So that's not leaving us much cash flow to set aside for year to year to recoup. Right. I know you're saying, what's the plan? You're making money. Why isn't that helping build that reserve down the road? Well, my, my, my point is, well, actually, is you know, that you know, any any business establishment that, that's out there mm -hmm. has to make profit, mm -hmm. right? But the only way the golf course is making a profit right now is with the members' assessment. Don't get me wrong; I sure. love playing golf, right? I don't I don't want to say golf, <laughs> but right, it is costing Sandy Pines money. To continue to operate the golf course, right? Uh, I don't want the golf course to go away, but we do need to find a way for that golf course, uh, you know, to get in flat, mm -hmm. right? Because this, this this is not a long-term sustainable thing for us just to be supporting the golf course forever and ever and ever. Right? And I don't disagree with you either. I do know before Sandy Pines turned on, that was why Sandy Pines kind of took that property on because it wasn't. So maybe 
I mean, you need to find people smarter than myself, obviously, to figure out how, I mean, there are other golf courses out there that are 100% self-sustaining. And, you know, they make money every, every year, year over year, right, and they keep operating. So how do we, you know, as any Pines, we need to get to that point, or, right, is it, is it something else, right? Do, does Sandy Pine just support it, right? So then, you know, um, I mean, some specific number of members that, you know, to be able to play, you know, whenever. Right. Yeah, and those are good questions. I'd like, just looking at the numbers here, remember green fees, 127,000. So if you take what you're paying right now as a member to out there, take that away. You're not yep. paying the assessment anymore. But are you going to, is every single member that's paying into that 127 going to pay full public right now? And if they don't, Well, see, yeah, yeah, and, yeah, and right now, the, the members, you know, for us, we do play golf, right? Mm -hmm. And it's kind of, you know, we're making plays, right? Because we're paying no play golf, and we're making sense yeah. right? right? You know, so it, my, my point is, it, it has to be self-sustainable. How do we get to that point? Do we need to get a group together, right, and start brainstorming, put some things together, put some stuff down on paper? I don't want to say it all for school, right? I know a lot of people don't want to say it all for school, right? It's a lot of fun. We have a great time. I, I have a course of my all the time, right? But we... It is a business, right? And it has to be able to at least break even and sustain itself, right? So we need to get to that point. And how do we do that? How do we get to that point? We have a year basically to figure out what our plan is. Maybe we do have to extend that assessment longer, but we, we, sh we have a year to at least get a plan together on how we are going to get to the self-sustaining point. I would, I would add a couple of uh, a couple of comments from from Chairman. So we we have looked at okay. So how do we how do we make that a self sustainable business? Because I, I don't I don't disagree with you, Joel. That you know it's a business and every business needs to be profitable. The the challenge with that uh, here at Sandy Pines is the, the members get hit with a golf assessment and members everybody anybody know how much a member gets charged for a round of nine? Five dollars. <laughs> so a round of 18, 10 bucks, okay? We've looked at other golf courses in the surrounding area. We've looked at Diamond Springs. We've looked at Glen Eagle and Hudsonville. We've gone um, down to, um, I'm forgetting some of them, Larry, but we've, we've looked at other golf courses and there's, uh, they do have member, some of them do have like member, um, um, Membership. Membership is what I'm looking for. Uh, but then they, they get a discounted rate. Their discounted rates are like 25 bucks. Okay. Um, the number two. You, you're not really comparing Apple to Apple when it comes to the golfers. I, I, I completely agree okay. with you. I completely agree with you. And, and where I agree with you, but I think where we'll have a little bit of a disconnect, is our Sandy Pines members will not, do not want to pay $25. They don't want to pay $45. I, my first, one of the first things I did in 2019, and I saw the Facebook post, uh, Impeach the New President, I raised the golf course fees for members from three bucks to five bucks. <laughs> for nine holes. Okay, so I completely agree. It's apples to oranges because of our community and what our community wants to pay. Um, the number two revenue generation at golf courses that are outside of here our liquor sales. We don't have liquor sales. Do we want to go down the road of having liquor sales? Um, our golf course is shorter than other golf courses. So when Larry has gone out to try and solicit additional um, leagues, corporate events, um, we're kind of at the bottom of the list because we're a short course. Um, another revenue constraint that we have is golf cart rentals. The majority of our members take what? Their own golf carts down there. So we we can't we have looked at all right. If this goes away, here's what the members' costs are going to be for around nine, around of eighteen. Um, we don't we they don't want to rent golf carts. So then, do we charge them a trail fee to bring their golf cart their golf cart onto the golf course? Mm -hmm. And then you start adding that up. We have presented some of these, you know, going back two years to the golf committee, and they're like, well, our members aren't gonna pay for this. So it is apples and oranges, and that's kind of the, 
the, the catch-22 that we're trying to find the happy medium with, you know, when Kenson sails and he's, he's, he's sitting across the table to try and bring somebody new in and sell your site, I don't want any of you to leave, but uh, he's trying to sell somebody's site. Hey, help me, help me understand why this costs $200,000. Well, you got a beautiful lake, number one. Number two, you're attached to a golf course. And number three, you've got all the, all the events that take place here in this community. You take that golf course away, the values go down. If it doesn't become sustainable, then you, we have to put it up for sale. And then what comes next to see any pines on that golf course? Mm -hmm. And, and that's the thing. I, I don't want to see it going on. But we're trying to find that. Yeah, we're trying to find that. Yeah, we're trying to find that. You're thinking outside the box. Yep. You know, uh, on different things. You know, maybe it doesn't have something to do directly with golf cart sales or golf cart rentals or, or all that kind of stuff. You know, and you know, I don't have any specific ideas right off the top of my head because I'm just kind of spitballing here mm -hmm. because something I thought of while I was standing. Yep. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, making that you know, it, it, and it 100 percent can be a revenue generator for the park uh, as well. You know, it's just how do we get there? You know, right. and, and what do we what do we do? And you know, Agreed. get all kinds of smart people together, and you know, see what we can do. Joel, you're one of those smart people. Can, I, can you get on the golf cart? Our golf course committee. I can get on the golf cart. Please, okay. our golf cart. Well, golf well, course committee only run golf carts. No, 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 no. no. Uh, I would really appreciate if you would get on that golf course committee because. Your thinking is in line with what the board's thinking is. Okay, sir. Yeah. Well, no. okay. Jeff, Jeff spoke to it last night. He said we're, you know, we're <laughs> discussing it. We're looking at it. I mean, obviously, it was important when they purchased it. The membership purchased it. Obviously, it was important when they did the 10 year capital. The membership approved right. it. So it's not like it's just people wasting it's money. Absolutely. It's, it, everybody for decades had thought it was worth it. So, so. Get together, get the, all the information, spitball like you said, and then see what sticks. And at the end of the day, there may still be an assessment. It may be less. People that use, I've been here 20 years. I've never golfed once. I can't wait until I'm old enough. But when that day comes, I want to cheer so I can use it. Of course. But seriously, though, I mean, and I pay my assessment, and, and it's an asset to the park. It is absolutely. And, and it's not like it's well, it's, it's got to be a revenue generating business. Well, in a perfect world, that may be the case, but for decades, the membership of Sandy Pines has said, we support the golf course, not only in words, but financially. And they voted on it over and over again. And this is just to bring it up to get ahead of it, to say, there's always a better way to do something. There is. You know, can, can, can we do I something? I don't want to degrade it to the golf course. You know, I love it, I, I, I play every Sunday. You know, what have we learned in the last, you know, 15 years that we can improve on. And I think that's the goal, is to get everybody. That, that goal. And you're already on the committee. We're going to vote on it here <laughs> next week. <laughs> 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 everybody has great ideas, but nobody wants to sit down and put the numbers to paper and make things work. You know, it's easy to come and say, you need to do this, this, and this. Well, let's and I was going to, I'm going to reiterate that. Um, what Alan said is great. Joel, you should be on the golf committee. There's no doubt in my mind that you should not be on the golf committee. It's not that hard. You sit down, we, spit, we meet three, like three or four times a year um, and just kick around ideas, thoughts, and, and things like that. Um, over the last year, with what I was able to see at the golf course, this golf course has a tremendous amount of, of potential. We, we tapped into some of it, just to tap a, a little bit. Um, the new ideas and thoughts that David and I have been talking about, where we see this golf course going, what we can accomplish is, you know, maybe someday it could become sustainable, but it's not going to happen right away. So, um, my predecessor that was there for a number of years did a great job of getting this golf course in the condition that it's in. That was his focus. He was not sales oriented. So with that, he was focused on building a business from the golf course, then out to the public. I'm more of a salesperson. So this last year, taking what Gary had already started, and now taking it the next step in the sales. You're right, we should have had a long plan with this all planned out for 10, 20 years, but we didn't. Because people come and go, 
but now we think we've got a pretty good base of where we're going to take this golf course. I think it has the potential to become very close to being self-sustainable. It's just going to take some time and some work to get it there. So I think it's worth us to keep this investment and move forward with it. Um, but it's going to have to be supported at least for the next few years or whatever so we can get to the point where it could become more sustainable. So all I want to say. Thank you, Larry. I have a question for Larry. Oh, perfect. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Carolyn. Do we have numbers as far as how many members play golf, pay their $5 or whatever? Absolutely. I'm working on those numbers right and now. I've been working on people that we have that pay, what, 15, what is the outside uh, fee? For, for an outside fee today with a cart for 18 holes, it's $38. Do we have a number on how many? I, I do have that. I am working on the numbers, putting the numbers together. I don't have them right now. I, I don't want to give you numbers. I can give you generalities right now, but I can't give you exact hard numbers. I will have exact hard exactly. numbers of exactly what the members, what the members uh, contribute to the golf course. Outside play contributes, golf cart rentals will contribute, our sales of our food, profitability of our sales, I will have all that put together with hard numbers here in a short time. Um, I'm working on those numbers right now. So, well, um, and then we, we, we can actually from that, yeah, then, uh, what's that? I want to applaud Larry. <laughs> Just doing a job up for you. <laughs> I got 29 members coming in on June 10th. <laughs> yes, yes, you do, and I'm, I'm glad you do. So that's the other thing. Um, the more you can support your golf course, the better off we're all going to be. Um, I still see a lot of potential there. Where you know we're trying. Um, we had a breakfast buffet the other day um, for Mother's Day. We had probably and. and the people that I see show up for that were non-golfers, most, mostly non-golfers, which just warmed my heart. Because yes, now, now I'm seeing people, I, I, I see people down there that I've never seen down there at the golf course before. I've had people walk in the last year, come down here, come down there for food and things like that, that say, you know, we've been here 20 years, we've never been in this golf course before. It's like, are you kidding me? You're missing out on a lot of stuff. Today I'm doing a putt-putt. Um, tournament. Um, so you don't have to be a golfer. You can come down and putt. We're playing 20 holes of golf and we're going to putt. So you only need to have a putter. If you play miniature golf before, you can do this. And so there's opportunities there. So we are looking for the opportunities to move on to other things other than golf. Um, again, David and I have had some conversations about what it's going to take to make this more of a year round facility of some sort whether with a number of different ideas. So there's things that we can do and look at to get the potential out of that golf course, but we do need time, and that's what we're asking for, okay? Roger. So you just told me you have numbers of <clears throat> the members of this park, they pay $5, and the outside people pay a certain fee. Um, why don't we possibly maybe do a study a study of you saying we need so many members to play golf or so many on the outside to play golf and then take that study where is your break even point right now you're paying five dollars so then you're saying we have to maybe increase the five to eight or ten and increase the outside members maybe from what did you say 36 or 38 that might have up a few dollars so at least you have the uh, you have an idea on how high you have to go at least to break an even point. Here's another one for the golf. Well, I think that's where we're at. So, Roger, Roger, that's that's exactly where we're at. We've been crunching those numbers. Uh, We've what never was heard that. what we're yep. Yeah, so where what we communicated last night at the board meeting was <clears throat> Larry, David, myself. Uh, Larry David. Um, so uh, where where we're at is we're going to start doing what we did last year for like the spectrum. We're going to start holding town halls. We're going to start having Larry and David here at face-to-face -face meetings. 
We're going to start pulling some informationals uh, down at the golf course. We're going to start getting those numbers out to people. And, and one, we want to get feedback ideas. Now that Joel's on the committee, we'll get some additional ideas. Um, but uh, uh, so we that's what we, we kind of kicked off last night is those numbers are in process. Every time we, we Larry and I have looked at those numbers, we're like, well, what about this? So Yeah, because you might come up with some numbers and you're Give me a general idea on how many people uh, golf from the park that are members. Let's say there's a thousand people that, that <coughs> golf in a year, okay? Then the study shows, well, we need at least 1,300 or 1,500 to get to that break-even point. Then you're saying to yourself, is this going to be realistic? Well, what right. numbers ever come to 1,500? Then you got an idea in the next years, if, if you're ever going to get to a break-even point, no, com completely. Yeah, and, yep. And I just said that's where that's exactly that's where, where we're at. at. And that's why you know to Kimberly and Jeff that that's why we're having this conversation a year ahead of time. So it's not next year at this time saying oh you know the sky's falling. What are we going to do? I mean that's the whole purpose of it. They brought it to the board and said look we need to get ahead of this. We need to get everybody's input and we need to make some decisions. And to be able to do that, we've got to gather all the information, whether you want to call it a study or workshop, whatever you want. But it's to gather all that information, plug all the numbers in, and then see, you know, you might have different tiers. This is what you need to do. This is what, you know, exactly as you said. It's going to be this much for this much, you know, or you're going to have to have this much. You got, I mean, the figures don't lie, liars figure. you got to get the data, look at it, figure it out, and see where it's at, and, and then get everybody's input. And that's the whole purpose of having it a year ahead of time. I mean, before it's always they wait right to the end, and then it's oh, we got to get something on the ballot by you know, right. it's going to be on August. We got to have everything done by June or whatever. So, so this gives us a whole year to get everybody's input, come to meetings, and have that dialogue, and move forward as a group and say this is what we feel as of today. And we're not, you know, sometimes we have to pivot. We make decisions, and it don't work out the way we thought it was going to. That's just life. But at least we can get together and say, hey, here, you know, this is what we think. Yeah. We have even had even with, can I say one yep. quick, um, even with all of that, everything is a moving target. It doesn't just I mean you can't just sit there and say, okay, part one. We need fifteen hundred golfers and we'll we'll be covered. Because we don't know. For example, I'll give you fertilizers in the last two years have gone up twenty percent every year. We can't predict. Yeah, we don't know exactly what's going to happen. That's all the more reason to bump that five to maybe seven dollars. Yeah. But, but that's not what I'm saying. It, it, it's, it's a moving target, so we don't yeah. know that. I understand that. But we're working on trying <coughs> to get a handle on all those costs. Costs have gone through the roof for everything. Yeah, I understand. Everything that you find nowadays has gone through the roof. So, but with that, though, we can be probably a little more proactive and figuring out a plan that should incorporate some of those increases over the years. Yeah. So, that's, that's just, you know, so you're right though. Um, I look at our fill rate down there for our golf course, and we've got a lot of potential there. We could, we could make that course busier than what it is today. Yeah. Now, I know some people don't like to hear that because sometimes they say, well, it's too hard to get a tee time now. Well, prime times it is, off times it's not. But I've got a lot of off, off times that can be filled up. So we, I've got to look for ways to do that. And I'm looking at that with leads, with groups, with different things. And we're filling those off times with things like that. So so we are working on all those plans, just like you said. So, and, and our plan is to put all the numbers together so you can see exactly what it's going to take for an, for an assessment. Okay? Thank you, Larry. Yeah. No, he, he <laughs> okay, all right, perfect. So, hey, just doing a time check here because uh, I know you guys want to get out and enjoy the uh, the sun and the warm weather. One more, <laughs> <laughs> one more big question. Sure, Roger. It's Ralph. Ralph. Or I'm sorry, Ralph. Close enough. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. So, what's your impression right now? How spectrum is going? Um. I would say 85, 90%, I, I get positive feedback. I get the one-offs on, um, you know, hey, they didn't ship me the equipment, or, you know, my modem's broke, uh, a technician didn't show up. Um, so the, I would say the feedback that's coming across my desk is about 85, 90% positive. We've seen upwards of 10, 12 trucks here zooming through the park 
doing installations, gave some numbers last night with, um, we, we started, this was the other off-season project that we, we started, um, a huge focus on. We did bi, we had bi-weekly uh, meetings with Spectrum starting in really September. Um, as we got close to the launch date, we, we were on weekly. Um, I can honestly say the membership, I'm on the calls with Spectrum uh, pretty much every day. I've had members come into my office. We, we've called Spectrum directly if they've had an issue. Um, they've been really good to work with to resolve those issues. Um, Spectrum and Sandy Pines forecasted 2,162 members. Uh, 1,732 of our members we forecasted we're going to do the self-install. Um, and that means turning our conference room into a distribution center, which it has been. Um, and our volunteers have been a godsend. Uh, Karen Forrest, Peggy Finkmeiner, Diane Ronda, Tammy LaFon, I'm, I'm sure I'm going to leave some people out. Member service, uh, the two Nicoles up front. Um, you know, we've even had Ian, Paul, Janelle, we get two, sometimes three trucks a day from FedEx and uh, the teams un unloading uh, the trucks. So, 1,732 packages, we were at 1,605, have gone through, uh, have been shipped to Sandy Pines. We have 198 that we communicated um, last night that are still sitting in our in our conference room. Uh, we also threw out a reminder, June 5th is the date where if you have not ordered your equipment, got your equipment, installed your equipment, your old modems, internet connections, will no longer work. Spectrum, because we're talking with two different divisions, the old division with the old equipment wanted those shut off April 15th. And we said, no, you got to give us time to implement this. So they extended through June 5th. After June 5th, your modems are done, so you have to have your new equipment installed. Yes. So I've had one experience with Spectrum, and that was yesterday. Okay. Because I had my system installed, because I'm not that tech savvy to figure it all out by myself. So this has been my experience. First of all, I found out that Spectrum did not come to my door. It's all contracted out by another company, correct? It's not all contracted out. That's what he told me. Oh, it's not. Started. It's not all contracted out. Okay. In order to, in order to service the needs of the park, they have three installers. They have Spectrum from Holland. Okay. They have Spectrum from Kalamazoo, okay. and they did outsource another technical company to ensure that we could get everything installed by June 5th. Well, okay, um, I guess I didn't know that because you said that the guy that was at our place, he said, you know, a lot of it is done by outside contractors, so I just assume that most of it is done by outside contractors, okay? I'm just telling you what he told Okay. Me, okay? And that doesn't matter because I'm sure Spectrum people are qualified also to do the install, right? So he comes to our place and everything's fine, gentlemen, great. Very helpful, and I said to him, "Okay, now um, oh, let's let me go back a little bit. The original big box that he has. This, this is this is his words. He says, I've been having a lot of issues with the main box being installed. He couldn't get ours installed. He tried everything. He was on the phone with, I guess, his tech people that he has a direct line to. So finally, they both admitted, no, nope, this one is not going to work. So then he says to me, he says." We're having a lot of problems with people that have been getting their equipment and they've been picking it up. That the main box is what he called refurbished boxes. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, what does that mean? He said, well, he said, if I would have gotten your bo box to work, and I, and I know it was a refurbished box, and I wouldn't tell you anything, he said, I could just walk out the door. But he said, I'll guarantee you in a year or two you'd have problems. That has to be replaced. I said, ooh, that's not so bad. So maybe you can check and see once what the percentage of refurbished boxes are going into this park mm -hmm. so all of our people don't have all these issues down the line. Okay. okay? No, I appreciate that feedback. And then another thing, um, I wanted two TVs to work, and I assumed 
he was going to you know, put the box on the, on the TV inside and I wanted one of the boards. He said, well, I don't have an order for that. So does that mean <clears throat> I paid, now I'm going to pay for the install, right? Does that mean I have to call Spectrum to come back in and put another small box on the other TV? How is that going to work? So did you have, did you order two boxes to be installed? No, one. Okay. I just, no, I asked for an install. Yeah. And I didn't know I had to specify it for an extra box. Okay. So we have all that information on the frequently asked questions. We've been communicating that. The, the package that we have from Spectrum is one cable box, yeah. one router, one modem. We've See, been, I, I didn't know that. We've been, we've been communicating that since last summer. That's, that's the thing. If you want an extra box, you have to order that specifically. When you set up your account, they ask for your name. Uh, we told them to stop asking for social security numbers, um, but you have to provide your name, email address, contact, and the extra add-ons, an extra box, extra channels, that gets, gets billed directly to you. So if you order two boxes and they that was in your equipment, the installation is all the equipment that I have here gets installed. He told me that. He said if you okay. would have ordered an extra yep. box, he said I would have done the install. Yep. And I said, well, I, I guess maybe I assumed that when you showed up, I would just say, okay, you got this one all set inside the unit, and I like one on the boards also. He says, well, it's not on my work order sheet, and he's right. And, and he's, he's accurate. I, I guess maybe that was my mistake of not asking yep. enough questions. Agreed. Then another thing. <clears throat> okay. When we went to the meeting, <laughs> uh, she said, hurry up, she I wants a turn. <laughs> I'm sorry. What else? When we went to the meeting last year, I'll make it quick for <laughs> that, that we were told that we could take this package to different locations. Yes. Okay, the way I understand it, and I didn't really know how, exactly how this is going to work, it sounds like from the gentleman I talked to yesterday, you physically have to disconnect everything you have here at Sandy Pines and take okay. it to Florida. No. So, so again, what, when we say package, Again, the reason why everybody has to call in and set up their own account is your physical equipment cannot leave Sandy Pines. It's Sandy Pines equipment. It's our contract, you can't pick it up. If you were to sell site A and move to site B, you can't even pick it up from site A to site B. It stays at your site. The package that we're talking about is the streaming package. So I have, I have all this in my trailer. And when I go home to Hudsonville, I actually download the app and I can watch everything that I have in my trailer at home. We went to Mississippi to pick my, my daughter up and bring her back from college. We streamed it all the way down there. You have an app, it's called the Spectrum TV app, and you can download that on your phone, a tablet. You can download it to, if you live in Florida, you can download it onto your TV through a Samsung TV or a Roku device, and you can watch it at a different location. You can't physically pick up the equipment. Okay, so I gotta get a high tech guy to show me how to do all that. Well, for a grandkid. Or, or, yeah. Grandkids. <laughs> and, and again, the last comment on that, because there are small is all of that information, if you go out to the website, Ian has done a phenomenal job. Last year, we took in all of these questions and we put together probably 25 or more frequently asked questions on our website. If you go to sandypines.com, in the little search, you, you type in Spectrum, it'll take you to the, all the Spectrum TV internet and there's 25 uh, frequently asked questions and your question on equipment, streaming, how to stream it, how to download it, all of that is there. Take a look, take a look there. I'll have to take my grandchild to Florida. Okay. There you go. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Okay, um, I wanted to know, you said something about the equipment, you have to return it. I've got it in a box. Your, your old equipment? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so if, um, if you have your old equipment, what we've been telling people is you have to return your old modem. So the yeah. only thing you should have as far as old equipment is a modem. The old Sandy Pines package had a coaxial cable 
that you could connect directly to TVs, no real cable boxes, just yeah. the cable. Um, in order to get your modem to work, you have to have a modem and a router so they can talk together and download the internet signal for you. The router is yours, that's your property, you keep that. Um, so then, um, uh, my picture is real light and hazy, is that what everybody's experiencing? No, I actually, um, again, so the majority of the feedback I got is, it's, it's crystal clear, it's a lot better than what it has, so if you're having a connection issue, um, you can dial the uh, 833 number for Spectrum and ask for technical support over the phone. It also might be a display setting. Yeah. Well, and then, uh, I don't know if it, uh, I was told that instead of a second uh, equipment to get a real cool, yes. I did, <coughs> that one is real clear. Yep. 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 That's beautiful. Yep. But I can't get the other channels. Is that no, you should be you should be able to get all the same channels. Now, one thing that did come up this week, um, and again, Spectrum being a forty plus billion dollar company, when we call in, they have service reps all over the place, thousands and thousands of service reps. Um, some of them, when they've activated your account, have only activated. We have what's called TV Select and Entertainment View. Some of them have only activated the TV select. If you're not getting all the channels on that channel guide that you can pick up in member service or that came in your box or that's on the website, call Spectrum at that 1833 number and tell them that you're not getting all the channels and that they will go into the system and, and flip the switch. I've had that happen twice this week. And then, can I ask a different question? Absolutely. Okay. Um, the last couple of years, I have a, a spot at uh, the flea market, mm -hmm. but we put the tent up at night and before. Now you said, can't do that? You, you can do that. There's two things. Um, what we ran into for the last couple of years were people coming in and setting up the tents and then selling. Before the flea market actually took place. So, if you want to come in and set up the tent, what we institute is you can do that. You can come set it up for a fee so we know who is there because we have had some people come in that just all of a sudden set up a tent and started selling Thursday nights and we had no clue on who that was. Well, okay, so how much is that fee? How much is that fee, Janelle? You know? I think it's 10 bucks. Yeah, number, number so so very much money. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now, can I ask one other question? Yeah. <laughs> well, now his arm's tired. Yeah, very, go ahead. Very quick. Okay. <clears throat> At the main pool. Yes. Every time, every summer, people are complaining. Can we have this trees topped that go by the setting sun? It's setting at three o'clock and it's gets cold. Well, yeah, the trees are getting taller. Can we get them tapped? So I can I can pour that on to Jeff, the park inspector, and Ben. I know that's come up a few times. One <laughs> of the, one of the things that have come uh, back to us is uh, during the off season, do we get a is it an arborist to come through and take a look at our trees and give recommendations that some are too full, we need to trim them down. Uh, things of that nature, so I can please I can afford that. Check those, please. Yep. Uh, there, there's about six trees that need to be chopped to clear that problem up. I've been complaining for a number of years, too, but it doesn't do any good. Okay. There's, there's four more on N257. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. So now everybody knows where Joel yeah. lives. And <laughs> And if he's not at the if, if he's not at the golf course committee, we know where to find him. Yes. Last question. One of the things you said about spectrum and streaming yes. was sort of off a little bit because you can't get all the channels when you're not in this area. Right. Yeah. True. Yeah. Yeah. Going you don't get the local channels. You don't get that's channel 13. that's yeah. Yeah. a fair point. Thank you. I yes. get local channels in Kalamazoo. I just think it depends on where you're located. Yeah, Florida. You don't. Yeah. 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 In Florida so if you, if you go to Fort Myers or someplace like that, if you want. Fort Myers, local TV for weather, things of that nature. If you're streaming Spectrum, you'll get the Grand Rapids local channels. You won't get your 
Fort Myers. No, you won't get you won't get, don't get them at all. You don't get them at all. Oh, you, don't, you don't get the local ones either? If you're in Florida, you won't get local channels. No. Yeah. Yeah. I was, okay. No. You don't get ABC, NBC. Thank you for correcting Thank you. Yeah, I set my stereo up first. Before I came here, I think it's going to be a little bit different. All right, we're slightly over. Um, any questions, because they've been quiet in the back here. <laughs> any questions for Paul, public safety, or Captain Sales, Janelle and Campy? We've already talked about Ian and the website. I do want to thank Kent for getting me nice neighbors on both sides. Oh. <laughs> Great people, good job, Kent. <laughs> Larry, <laughs> questions? I have one thing for Paul. Because <laughs> I just didn't want him to sit here. <laughs> no, what's your I question for Paul? Say, As a member, what's your I, question? I don't know if everybody else has witnessed this or not, but we are just extremely pleased with the way the PSO office is working and how they come out and check on us on a regular basis. They're down at the golf course checking on us, making sure we're okay at least twice a day. Um, I see them everywhere. They're friendly. They're, Paul's done a great job. So. Yes. Amen. Thank you. All right, with that, we will uh, conclude our first face-to-face. -face, uh, go enjoy the, the sun and the warm weather. All right, take care. Have a blessed day.